it's a part two of my demo. <laughs> Definitely user, it must have been user error. So what happened was if you saw where we ended last time, um, my heat mug wasn't, or my heat press was not heating up. So what I did was I just plugged in um, for it to connect to my laptop and I reset up my mug, uh, my mug press. And lo and behold, it's green. So I'm <laughs> user error. All right. What I love about the about the infusible ink sheets is that the same design, I cut this once, right? I pulled out this and left the inside, which is this. So you're going to see at the end, it's so this is the inside, everything that I, you know, pulled off. And then this is the outside. It's going to give us two looks, same sheet, okay? So let's put this in. One of the things that I read, because as you know, this is my first mug putting in, um, is when you're putting it in, everything is super hot, right? You wanna make sure that your handle is not touching, it's in between the slits right here. You don't want that heating up apparently, because that's where, you're, that's where how you're gonna pull it out. I mean, of course you could wear gloves and whatever else, but we'll see how this works. All right, so I'm gonna put this in, and it's making me really nervous. All right, I'm gonna put the handle closer to this edge because as I push this down, it's gonna move my mug a little bit. So I'm just checking. I'm gonna move it over, slide it over a little bit more. Okay. Okay. I shut it down so you can see my my mug handle is right in between the two spaces. So right now it's going to heat up. It's going to take about six minutes. I've, from what I've read, <laughs> is that that time can, it, it will vary because it depends on the temperature in the room, your mug temperature. So it's just going to beep when it's done. Now let's talk about this piece while that's going. So this piece is the negative. If you remember, um, there were some extra um, pieces of the transfer sheet that wasn't being used. So I cut it off and I put it on here so that I can keep hold of the inside. For instance, like the inside of the, the O, right? Those are pieces that were weeded out earlier. So on this one, it's all set up. I just couldn't find this little piece right here for the S. It's somewhere here. <laughs> but anyway, let's put this down. We're going to tape it up. Um, so I kind of want this. And I'm gonna, I'm just using the transfer tape right now, but I'm gonna go in and put, actually, I'm just gonna do it now because it's not really sticking that well. This is the heat, um, heat transfer tape, I guess. So it's a, it can get heated and it won't ruin anything. So just make sure that you're using this blue tape. This was on the Cricut site is where I ordered it from. And on this one, I'm gonna to have to tape down a lot because you need to make sure that this blue part is touching the mug so that the, the ink can be transferred. And I'm so impatient. So you're, you're supposed to wait, when you pull it out, you're supposed to wait, I think like 15 minutes. We'll see if I can wait that long. <laughs> All right, so let's tape this down. Now, I did see on their website that the mugs are sold out the in the big quantities. So I bought 36 mugs because it was the cheapest. So I definitely could do that. Let's get this down. But the mug press itself is still available. I just checked. And if you're gonna buy it, I would love it if you could support my links. So if you can press on it, it'll be in the video. All right, so let's cut this out. I would really appreciate it, thank you. All right, let's
let's get this down. So um, I don't know if you can really see it, but where the E is, this is kind of popping up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the tape here and just get it down to make sure that it's on there. And I'm going to get a little bit right here as well. So I'm sort of just making sure that this whole thing is down. Let's look on this side. I'm going to do just a little bit more. And then it looks like we're about halfway through. So while this is still going and after we finish taping, I'm just going to walk you through the setup a little bit. Okay, okay I feel like this is on pretty well. Alright, so this will be our second mug, the inverse of this mug. Um, so a couple things you need to make sure you will start to smell things so I It's highly recommended that you crack open a window. So I have my windows open so you might hear some extra noise over there um, You can feel the heat coming out of this middle area, but everything else is safe to touch right now <laughs> And then there's your mug um, Let's walk through the the setup so when you set it up, what you need to do is you need to have, let me see what my plug is. Did I already put it away? It comes with, okay, it's this little guy. So I have, this goes in the back of right over here. So right above the plug is this little thing that you're going to stick in. And then this I plugged into my laptop. So when you do that, you open up design space. So let me open up design space on my end. I'm not going to open it up for you guys to see. So when you're in design space, what you want to do is you want to click on the three bars. Actually, while this is heating up, I will show you my screen. So let's see. No, I don't want this. Do I want this? I do want this. <laughs> This has just been crazy. All right, let me get this. Okay, so here I am, right? So what you want to do is you want to go, if you're in here or not, you can click on the three bars and you do new machine setup. And then you're going to put heat press, Cricut mug press, and then it's going to walk you through right here. It's going to tell you, here's your mug. Make sure that um, it's on a heat resistant surface in a well ventilated area. The next thing is this is where you plug in. It needs to be plugged in and that's where this little guy goes. Once you have it, so I'm not connected right now obviously because I'm doing this, but once it's connected, then you power it on. You hold it down for about five seconds. You'll hear it and then your firmware will be updated. That's all you have to do. L make sure that it's completely done. I Apparently, I must not have done that the first time, even though I felt like I did, because the machine wasn't heating up. So it did say you can't do it until you, and if you don't have a, a laptop or a computer to plug in, you need to go to someone's house to actually do it. You cannot, this does not work until you do it. Okay. Um. All right, so let me go back to this. And sorry, I'm not editing this out. We're doing this on the fly. <laughs> oh, it's done. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this open. So it released everything. I'm like so scared to touch it. Okay, it feels really like operation here. So you don't wanna touch anything. We're gonna let it cool down. Oh, I don't know if you can see it in the screen, but I can see the blue in some areas. This is going to be a really, really pretty mug. But all right, so we're going to let this dry. Then this is still already green. I'm going to put this one in. Let 
I'm gonna press down. I'm just keeping an eye on where my mug handle is. And it looks like my mug handle is good. All right, so now this is heating up. Um, so you can see that was pretty easy, right? So again, if <laughs> that's the type of crafter you are, or just the type of um, like techie person, like me, I feel like I'm techie to a certain extent. I mean, obviously I'm teaching you how to use design space and creating these things. But when it comes to like machines, it makes me really nervous. Like I haven't used that attachment. So if this is what you need in order to actually do mugs, then it's a good price point, right? Because you can't use it on your five, five in one attachment one. So, all right. Let me see. I'm like dying to, to touch this. Um, I know with, even when I do the shirts and stuff, I never let it totally cool down. I think the cool down process is just so that you don't burn yourself. Right? So let's see if I can touch some of this. Get my little tweezers out. Can you see it? So I will say that I have all the markers, the infusible ink markers, and I don't like the markers. I mean, I like it for drawing. Like I had my, I gave the markers to my daughter and I gave her the, um, the laser paper so that she can draw something and then I made myself a shirt with her drawing which will last forever right that's that's the whole appeal of infusible ink um, so I like that what I the reason why I don't like it for mugs and for coasters and things like that is when you color in things and you'll know this um, even on paper right you can see each brush stroke so it looks really unfinished to me so like this it would come out and you would see that it was colored in by someone and not like pressed with the sheets so this looks really good because look all the ink came off my sheet because this is what the sheet looked like before it was pressed and look at the color difference it really you know it gets more vibrant but all the color is gone from here so that's awesome let's flip this over and see if we can get this side. Yay! <laughs> so Hot Shots Tennis Mom, little tennis ball, I love it. And you can stick this in the dishwasher. Um, so I don't know if you can see it, there's just, I mean, because I'm being nitpicky, right? Um, I needed to put more tape down because it, I can see some areas where it's not as dark as other areas, but in general, it looks really, really good. And it's also, I think this, this sheet, all the ones that I've done so far, I've done the Buffalo plaid and I've done more vibrant colors. So it comes across really, really good, but you can see even on here, all the color transferred because Actually, I have it out, so give me a second. Um, I don't know if I have that example, but see, look, here's my. <laughs> so here are all my markers. Um, oh, I don't have it on here, but I've used this in the past, and when you don't transfer all of it completely, some of the color will still remain on on this but this looks like all the color came off because it's all white i don't see any blue on here so i think we did a great job on our first mug let's see how our second mug comes out but so you're going to need i would recommend you know the tape obviously especially because knowing that we need to tape down to really get an even transfer um and i would recommend getting infusible ink sheet transfers um, or transfer sheets. If you use the markers, I just read it, 
you actually um, need to make sure that you have butcher paper as well. So you're going to put your um, your design on first, tape it down, and then you're gonna have three sheets of butcher paper between that and your press to make sure that the colors don't leak onto your press. And then maybe it can leak onto other designs, future designs. All right, that's it. If you wanna see me do more, and I apologize, that was user error and I had to cut the video short, but I will do more mugs because I kind of in love. I know it's $200, but if you're going to make the mugs and give them as gifts, then it's worth it, right? It's worth it if you use it. So that's my take. All right, you can go. Well, you can go anytime, <laughs> but I'm going to stay around. We're on the fourth dot, so there's only one more dot. So if you want to hang out and watch this, um, I'm trying to think what else you need. So... What else can I tell you about Infusible Ink? I would say the markers are really cool if you want to like write a message and you want to capture your handwriting. But even if you wanted to capture your handwriting, I feel like it would be better if you did it and then uploaded it into Design Space and then cut it out with one of these sheets. Because even then, then your, your handwriting style is captured but the actual execution of it applying to your mug or whatever, if you're gifting it like a mug, then it would still be better with the infusible ink sheets. So I'm a big fan of the sheets, but if you have kids, you know, I have my daughter, she's six. I plan on having her do a shirt like at the end of the year, at the end of the school year, I don't know, at Christmas time. It, I mean, it's, it's definitely a memento that I, I love. And I know that I'll be able to keep forever. I've seen people do it for pillows, so I think that's cute too. Um, all right, so it's blinking on the last one. It should come out any second now. And look, my mug, I can feel it. I'm, I'm not gonna touch this part, <laughs> but I can feel the heat, but the handle itself is totally good. I'm so excited this, oh, okay. So I popped it open. So on this one, whoa, it looked like it got burnt a little bit around the edges here. Okay, so I'm gonna get my little thing. I'm not gonna wait, because it's just for a friend. <laughs> She's probably not watching the video anyway. What did I do with my tweezers? Um, all right, so I'll use this one. I don't think this is the one I was using. off the tape oh and it also said that it doesn't support ink on the inside so don't do the inside and not the bottom of the mug are not strong enough. Here we go. Okay, so let's look at this. There's no blue left on here, except for the edge, right? It didn't, there was no heat because this was closest to the handle, so you can see this did not transfer. So that this is a great example of what, what transferred and what didn't. And here's the rest of it. So this is what you have. You have the inverse, right? So tennis mom, tennis mom. So this is the same sheet being used twice, right? And then on this side, you have the finisher and the finisher. I love it. Okay, I don't know, I'm a fan, even though I just spent $200 on this. <laughs> All right, let me know what you think, what you wanna see. Um, I will be designing more things, but I hope that all made sense and let me know what you think. All right, bye guys.